So as many of you guys have been requesting me to showcase my water cooling loop in a very in-depth view, so I will be doing that now. So I started to use custom water cooling in uh, kind of late of 2012, after I won a water cooling starter pack from a giveaway competition that was held on the Asus ROG forums. And that's kind of the place where I started this whole hobby, overclocking I mean, and pretty soon after building the simple custom water cooling loop, it all went out of hands. So I started to change individual parts and uh, make the whole loop even bigger. But it's technically the same custom water cooling loop that I'm still using even today. It has only just evolved from those days. I made the biggest upgrades in 2013 and 2014, but for the last like five or six years, it's been uh, pretty much the same without that major upgrades. But I think we could, we could just go through the parts as many of you have been asking about this water cooling loop as my temperatures are always so good. So the CPU water block that I'm currently using is the Alphacool Ice Block XPX, the clear or the transparent version I mean. It's the third water block that I'm using. The first one was the Alphacool Nexus Lite that came with the starter pack. Then I upgraded to uh, EK Supermassive Evo, the full nickel version. And now the third one is the Alphacool Ice Block XPX. This one has great performance and it's very compatible. So you can actually swap the mounting bracket without taking the loop apart. So it's a very nice feature for me because this is a test trick ultimately. So this is not your standard daily rig where you just put the parts together, build the custom water cooling loop, and then you close the case permanently for three to five years. This is more like a test trick. The muffle board could be swapped up to 20 times in one in just one day. So uh, with this water block, you can just slide off the Intel mounting bracket, then uh, slide in this AMD mounting bracket and you are pretty much good to go without taking the loop apart. So I really like this uh, feature on this CPU water block. So I can happily recommend this CPU water block if you build a custom water cooling loop for a test rig like this. Then when it comes to the uh, pumps and the reservoir, I'm still using this one liter sized kind of tube reservoir over here. It's just laying down on the table. I'm not fully sure if this is the most optimal way to run this reservoir. You can easily uh, run it empty when it's si when, it, when it's mounted sideways like this. I think the most optimal way would be to have it like standing upwards on the table, but it works just fine when it's completely filled with uh, coolant. Then uh, I'm still using two pumps in series. I know it's a waste, but uh, some time ago I just wanted to try like how well would two pumps in series work. And I just haven't uh, removed the other pump, but this is the first pump that I purchased, so this is the Phobia DC12400. It has a very nice pressure figure, so uh, I think the maximum pressure is uh, up to 4 meters, and the flow rate is 800 liters per hour. The pressure on this pump is definitely good. Then the second pump, uh, this is like a, a clone version, or a clone of the very popular Swiftec MCP pump. This is the Alphacool TPP644 pump. It has a huge flow rate up to 1500 liters per hour, but the pressure figure is actually worse than on the Phobia pump. But you are definitely good to go with just single pump. I just wanted to try two pumps in series like this. Then uh, I think the biggest highlights of this whole uh, water cooling loop are the radiators. So uh, I actually sold the original radiator that I got with the starter pack. It was just 20 millimeter, 20 millimeter thick 240 radiator from Alpha Cool. I first got this uh, kind of old and used 240 millimeter radiators from uh, eBay. They were from German eBay. They were very cheap, like 35 euros for the two radiators in total, plus the shipping on top. These could be swapped, I know, but I have just been using them since those days anyways. The biggest thing of this whole water cooling loop is definitely this huge radiator over here. So this is the the Phaser Company Monster Extreme Radiator. So uh, the Phaser Company is kind of unknown name today. It's often shortened as TFC. So this is their largest radiator they ever made. It's 10.5 centimeters thick. Uh, it supports 140 millimeter fans as well as 120 millimeter, 120 millimeter fans. So you can run three fans on both sides. I'm currently running uh, 
the radiator S420 radiator, so three times 140 millimeter fans, and uh, it has huge performance. I think this radiator came out originally in 2007 or 2008, and I was very lucky. So in early 2014, I saw one of these radiators going for sale on German eBay as new, unopened, never used item and it was only like 70 or 80 euros plus shipping on top and I got the radiator around that time and I've been using it since I have been using it since then I just made this uh, wooden plate so that the, so that the whole radiator can can actually sit on the table like this so it's not mounted like sideways as you would normally do uh, with these uh, radiators and it has a very nice like side panel so it would look I think it would look nice if this was uh, mounted on some case labs water cooling case because it has this it has this nice monster logo on the side panel over here. And uh, then I'm just running like a simple EK water blocks 360 radiator in the basement. I think it's only like 60 millimeters thick and only uh, and just fans on one side. So uh, it's not that easy to see because it's quite dark, but there's one radiator in the basement over there and the fans are in pool formation. So they actually pull air through the radiator and there's no, uh, there's no fans at all on the other side pushing air through the radiator. Because when you use the fans in pool, there's not that much dust buildup at all. The dust is the biggest issue when you have the fans in push formation. And I'm not fully. I'm not fully sure is a push pull always worth it in every uh, in every situation. But I think the only thing now that I that I could actually upgrade on this whole loop are the fans because I'm using just fans from various brands and not all of them are been good. Like for example, the uh, brand new Thermal Take tough fans are very good for uh, water cooling radiators because they have a very nice static pressure and quite good airflow as well so i could actually upgrade many of these fans over here like the uh, 120 millimeter fans of these small radiators as well as on the uh, 360 radiator in the basement but really i don't really recommend you to uh, build a custom water cooling loop like this because this is like a huge mess like four radiators mixed into one loop you can get pretty much the same performance if you just purchase the, uh, for example, the, the water cool Mora 420 radiator. So it's nine times 140 millimeter fans and it can stand on the table like this one over here. And uh, then you just need the water blocks, the pump and the reservoir. So it's, so it's a lot more compact setup than uh, a huge mess like this. I will be uh, building a loop like that soon once i get my things sorted upstairs so i think i will build i will make like a build log about that water cooling loop oh yeah and i still have this uh, gpu only water block over here as well it has very nice performance and it only covers the gpu because it has to be compatible in this kind of use so full cover water blocks are out of the uh, question in my case i just tried the uh, gpu only water block on 5870 lightning graphics card uh, which i tested for gpu die lapping and the performance was insane when i tried to run the card in 3 mark 11 graphics test 1 with overclocked settings like 1.2 volts on the gpu and 1000 megahertz on the core the temperature at idle was 28 degrees and the maximum gpu temperature after passing the test was only 31 degrees so it was technically just three degree difference between idle and load that's absolutely insane so it kind of shows that the water cooling loop is definitely awesome but i'm but of course the gpu lapping definitely helped as well and yeah and when it comes to cpu overclocking this water loop has done 5.5 gigahertz cinebench on 1900k 5.6 gigahertz in 3d mark 11 physics it can run uh, 10980XE 5 gigahertz plus the 28 core Xeon quite high as well so uh, yeah it's definitely good but this is not something I would recommend you to build so if you want like a very good water cooling setup for a test rig like this get something like the uh, water cool Mora 420 or the uh, there's also one from Phobia I think but the uh, 1260 radiator that's just one huge pack on the table and it's a lot more compact like something like than something like this 
But yeah, so if you wanted to see my whole uh, my, or my very uh, monster custom water cooling loop, then please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And yeah, thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.